Let me tell you about a child who was raised in a polarized world. A child who has never walked into an airport without taking her shoes off. A child who had to spend hours of her life learning how to hide behind a desk in case of a school shooter. A child who lost her high school years to a pandemic. A child who has never lived in a world without the internet, social media, or a smartphone. I am that child. The year I was born, the United States entered the Iraq War. When I was five, the Great Recession gripped this nation. I remember hearing words like mortgage, recession, inflation, not knowing what they meant, but seeing the adults in my life manage their worry. You can ask anyone my age, these memories will forever shape the way that we view and manage our money. When I was nine, I remember coming home from school and my parents wrapping me in a big hug. They held on to me for a long time, what felt like forever for a nine-year-old. Later that night, I watched on television as scaring children ran out of Sandy Hook Elementary School. Within the next year, I got to learn how to hide behind my teacher's desk and inside of closets. Words like lockdown, shelter in place, code red, punctuated the rest of my school years. When I was 10, I got my first iPhone that had replaced my outdated DS. When I was 11, I downloaded Instagram and I saw more of the world than I knew even existed. When I was 12, my love for politics began as I saw Hillary Clinton become the first female to receive the presidential nomination for a major American political party. When I was 13, I remember my mom waking me up at three in the morning to tell me that I could still become the first female president and that Donald Trump had won the White House. When I was 14, I remember watching thousands of women, including some of my own role models, come forward united behind the hashtag Me Too. When I was 15, I downloaded TikTok and I learned about trends. At the time, Visco girls were trending. Boomers, you can ask a young person later. <laughs> when I was 16, in the spring of 2020, I came home from school thinking I was gonna get a two week break. Two weeks to stop the spread. But in reality, the next time I would see all of my classmates was at my high school graduation. I remember watching my teachers struggle to manage us over Zoom and picking through my physics homework by myself and not in a classroom. It was hard to love learning like I used to. When I was 18, my love for politics matured into a love for foreign policy. I watched in horror as Russia launched a full-scale invasion into Ukraine. It was even trending on TikTok. Today, I turned 21, and to celebrate, I'm about to cast my vote for the very first time in a presidential election. <laughs> With every major news event, a screen was how I learned about it. As a child, it was a television screen. In my teenage years to now, it was a smartphone. I'm part of Generation Z, the kids born between 1997 and 2012. We are a group who has never lived in a world without the internet, social media, or even a smartphone. We are digital natives. Give us a tablet, laptop, smartphone, any technological device, and we will know how to use it. Let me put it simply. We are what you call us. iPad kids, screenagers, social media addicts. Now hear me out. 
Gen Z is more addicted to our phones than we even thought possible. Almost every person in my generation uses social media, and nearly half of us spend more than four hours on social media a day. But what certain platforms have capt captivated our attention? The top three most used platforms by Gen Z are Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. But surely there's a good reason for all of this time, right? More than half of my generation uses social media for entertainment and scrolling. I'm starting to think that these stereotypes are true. But there has to be more to the story. We are the most politically aware generation in American history, yet we are the most politically disengaged. We have seen every major news event unfold in a tiny screen in the palm of our hand. When you use your phone, you are using more computing power than what landed the astronauts of Apollo 11 on the moon. Almost any fact in the world is at your fingertips. And what do we do with all this power? How do we engage with the world? We scroll, we double click, we comment, we post, we share, we DM. And we call ourselves engaged? We have developed this illusion of engagement thanks to social media. We watch a 10 second video and we think that we are informed. We repost a fact graphic or a video, and we think that we are participating. We feel most comfortable on social media, but maybe we feel a little too comfortable. You see, engagement requires sustained commitment. Why social media is about instant gratification. Democracy asks us to use our brains. Why social media it appeals to our hearts. We show that we care, but we have to take this off the digital screen and beyond because Gen Z has the desire to make our communities and our world a better place. And we have a lot of momentum, but we spend our whole lives on our phones, scrolling and double clicking and sharing. So how do we translate the way that we engage with the world into something actionable? Something that lasts, something that's more than a trend. Because politics is more than a trend and we have to abandon this trend mindset and consistently participate. We're known for our TikTok dances, our outfit of the day reels. Social media takes up so much of our time. It's become addictive. I'm a social media user myself, I can admit. And I love TikTok, especially videos of dachshunds. <laughs> I follow probably a dozen dachshunds accounts and will spend hours of my life watching videos of little dogs running around. This is true for so many of, uh, of us. But where the problem lies is when we start to use these platforms as a way to inform us. Nearly 50% of my generation check social media daily for national news compared to the few 4% who check a national newspaper. And almost three fourths of my generation never checks a national newspaper. This is a problem because a social media source might show you a glimpse of an event, but it will never go as in depth as a national newspaper, a podcast, a TV program, or even a book. And why posting about something that you care deeply about is great, don't mistake it for actual political participation. You have to vote, call your elected officials, go to meetings, talk to people. Yes, in person. I'm not saying get rid of your phones, and I'm certainly not getting rid of mine. But we have so many social media apps. What about downloading a news app? After all, information is more accessible than it has ever been. We use our phones to show that we care. 
but do we show up? Less than a quarter of eligible Gen Z voters do not know how to register to vote. But wait, we spend four hours on our phones a day. Can't we just look this up? Guess not. Almost half of Gen Z voters who did not vote in 2022 said that they forgot or they didn't have time. But wait, we spend 1,400 hours on our phones a year and we can't take a couple of minutes or hours to go vote in just one day? What is happening here? How can we spend so many hours on our phones and not know how to vote or even go and vote? Is it because we are simply not motivated? Or is it because we have tricked ourselves into thinking that scrolling and double clicking and posting is all we must do? We are a generation of trends. If it's cute, if it's funny, we can make it go viral for a couple of days, but then we usually forget about it. And if it's a tragedy, we will share and repost for a couple of days, even weeks, but then we move on. Trends can be important. They can mobilize people, but they can also just be a joke. But have we turned democracy into a trend? The limitation of a trend is that it burns out, and democracy cannot burn out. I am proud to be a part of my generation, and I'm excited to see what we will do in the future. We have this great potential, so let's unlock it as many times as we unlock our phones. We have the opportunity to be the most politically aware informed and engaged generation. And our phones, they can help us. And let's be a part of our democracy on and off our phones, whether it's trending or not, whether it's convenient or not. I invite you all to be aware, informed, and engaged. <laughs>